It was a daunting task. How do you replace an aging bascule bridge that's a crucial link to a thriving maritime hub and make the switch without a major disruption to vehicle and marine traffic essential to the area's economy? The answer was a textbook example of engineering ingenuity. The vitality of a community is dependent upon its physical connections. And this was no ordinary community. One of the world's largest natural harbors, the Hampton Roads area of Virginia is known for its year-round ice-free waterways. The region is home to four Fortune 500 corporations, a high concentration of military bases and shipyards, and miles of valuable waterfront property, all necessary to sustain the area's economy. The crossroads of all three of the area's physical connections, its highways, railways, and waterways, is the Henry G. Gilmerton Bridge. It's a very complex site because of the confluence of marine traffic, rail traffic, and highway traffic, and it was very restricted in terms of geometry and weight. The Gilmerton Bridge plays a huge role in just the economic infrastructure of the Port of Hampton Roads. It crosses the southern branch of the Elizabeth River and therefore is a, a major thoroughfare for vehicular traffic. It's also something that vessel traffic, many of them, have to go beneath. One of the five major bridges connecting the region, the Gilmerton Bridge carries nearly one million travelers every month along Military Highway, and it plays an essential role in maintaining commercial naval traffic along the Elizabeth River. The span's 11-foot clearance required 7,500 bridge lifts a year, making it the most frequently opened movable bridge in the Hampton Roads area. After nearly 70 years of service, the structure had reached the end of its design life. The existing Gilmerton Bridge has been load limited for a number of years. So as the fire trucks and the emergency responders and those type of vehicles have gotten larger and larger, they've been unable to cross the bridge hindering response time, hindering commerce. The bridge is deteriorating. We have about 35,000 vehicles use the bridge daily, and the bridge is in need of repair or replacement. The original Gilmerton Bridge here was uh, severely deteriorated beyond uh, rehabilitation, and so their only alternative at this point in time was a complete replacement. For this complex assignment, the Virginia Department of Transportation and the City of Chesapeake turned to movable bridge experts, Majeski and Masters. The stakes couldn't have been higher. Because of the geometry of the river in this area, there's some very sharp curves in the river. The Coast Guard felt that the only safe alignment for the mariners would be on the existing alignment. So we had no choice but to build the new bridge over top of the existing bridge. This is a very important artery for the local economy here, so this traffic couldn't be stopped. So this, the towers of this bridge had to be built over live traffic without a traffic stoppage. That in itself complicates things. There were other considerations. Construction had to be coordinated around seasonal migrations by large luxury yacht owners, known locally as snowbirds, who play an important role in the local economy. The close proximity of the Norfolk Southern Railroad line to the bridge posed still another set of challenges. There would have to be minimal disruption to railroad traffic, especially shipments of coal, Norfolk Southern's main income producer. Majeski and Masters engineers went to work finding answers that satisfied all criteria. Initially, 70 different alternative designs were considered. Finally, one was chosen. It featured a 250-foot-long, 89-foot-wide lift span. Four 15-foot diameter shivs were needed on each tower to accommodate the exceptional width. The new lift span will accommodate four travel lanes, but is capable of expanding to six. Some of the machinery is, is very large. It's uh, 89 feet wide, center to center of the, the columns. So we have four shivs, which is twice the normal number. In order for new construction to take place over live traffic, it was necessary to install drilled shaft foundations that straddled the existing bridge. The Majeski and Masters plan called for a total of eight 12-foot diameter shafts 
reaching 120 feet below ground level. To complete that phase, a specially made massive oscillator was used with impressive results. We are the only ones that, that we know of that have used the oscillation method to put these drill shafts in at this size. They're one of the biggest ones in the United States. PCL Constructors, the project's bridge contractor, used seismic instruments to help identify any impacts to the railroad foundation. Here, then, is how Majeski and Masters' ingenious design took shape. Maintaining traffic at the site was accomplished by building the new bridge over top of the existing structure. To construct the drilled shafts, steel casings are installed using the oscillation method and completed with reinforced concrete. Each set of shafts is then capped off. Next, portions of the new approach span foundations are constructed. Above the surface, two 207-foot tall steel main span lift towers are erected directly above live traffic. These new towers provide 135 feet of vertical clearance and will reduce the number of openings by 40%. Meanwhile, construction of the approach superstructure continues, an essential step to maintaining traffic following replacement of the main span. And during a brief closure, the old steel bascule span is floated out, replaced by the new 250-foot-long, 89-foot-wide span, floated into place using accelerated construction techniques. With the new span in place, vehicular traffic resumes, diverted onto portions of the new bridge. Just as important, the lift span is now fully operational, allowing marine traffic to continue uninterrupted. With the demolition of the remaining portions of the existing bridge, the final pieces of this challenging puzzle are completed. This new structure, with its expanded width, now accommodates four travel lanes with capacity to expand to six in the future. But if this complex strategy was to work, it required the efforts of hundreds of people and the cooperation of Mother Nature. On January 7, 2013, after more than four years of planning, it was time for the solution to be launched. The new span, constructed at a site upriver, began its journey down the Elizabeth River. Tugboat crews would have to navigate a total of seven nautical miles, adhering to a rigid timetable. The biggest variable is going to be communication. We're going to be traversing five bridges, the weather, the current, the tags. It all plays a big role on making this thing successful. It doesn't give you a whole lot of wiggle room to make errors. After a successful voyage downriver, the new section was floated in place and connected. At 1.15 p.m. on January 8th, the most challenging and stressful phase of construction was completed. The Gilmerton Bridge Replacement Project achieved several major milestones. Engineering a replacement to be constructed over the top of and next to two active bridges. The drilling of some of the largest shafts ever constructed using the oscillating method. And the rapid replacement of the old span by engineering an innovative float-in of the new lift section. This was definitely one for the textbook. Requiring more than a decade of planning and construction, the new Gilmerton Bridge will have an impact on the Hampton Roads region that cannot be overestimated. The bridge is there to serve well today and to serve well tomorrow with a minimum of impact to anyone using it in the future. I've lived in this area all my life and uh, I know how important this bridge is to the community. It's been a long time coming. It's going to really improve the transportation in this area. It is transportation that grows economies over time, historically. So to maintain it and to continue to build it is very important, not just of Virginia, but of the nation and here at the port, the world also. Another benefit? and improved infrastructure. It's an enormous movement of energy and creativity that takes place every day in and out of the work areas, in and out of the cities. And that's what it's all about. The economy of this country rests in the transportation system. There are other major countries 
that are able to produce goods, food, but not move them. Our strength has been to be able to produce them and move them to where they're needed. And the transportation system, be it road, rail, or waterway, is the heart of that. Well, it's no secret, uh, as many of our uh, leaders in Washington are saying, the, 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 one of the biggest concerns is the aging infrastructure of America. And, and of course, a key component of that is, is bridges. In the event of an emergency such as a hurricane, the new Gilmerton Bridge will be better able to handle the increased traffic demands associated with an evacuation. The challenge at the crossroads, replacing the Gilmerton Bridge, was met with overwhelming success, one shared by many. Since the beginning, m and has always been there. Agile, nimble, you know, ready to step in. They understand construction, they understand the needs of, of myself, understand the needs of the contractor. And it required the collaboration of many other organizations. VDOT, PCL, Parsons Brinkerhoff, the U.S. Coast Guard, the Norfolk Southern Railroad, and the city of Chesapeake. As an engineer, you know, it's, it's pretty cool when you get something come together, kind of the old A-team, you know, when a plan comes together. The collaboration and communication that we've had with, uh, with, the, with VDOT, with the client, as well with uh, Majeski and Masters has been phenomenal. There was a lot of coordinating to be done, and um, I'm just uh, very excited about the number of people that pulled through and did their part to make that all work. To see this beautiful new bridge shift down the river yesterday, and then to, to, to see the really the excitement of the community to know that they're going to have that reliability there on a daily basis is something that uh, you, you really can't put a price tag on.